Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. The saw has these two side panels made out of pressed steel. They've got rust on them and a bit of surface loose paint, so again with this abrasive disc I'm giving them a clean up. With most of the loose stuff removed I just use the air duster to clean it all off. Then I'm going to give it a coat with this rust converter. I got this from Tool Station if anyone's interested. So you just need to make sure the surface is clean and free from loose material, which I have done. Then you just brush it on and leave it. Now, if it's worked, it turns the rusty material black. So I coated one panel and kept the other one free just to compare for the video. So you can see it's really blackened up one, but there's still some rust patches. So it says after half an hour, you can give it a second coat. So that's what I do. After the second coat's dried, you can really see it's blackened up and really changed it. This rust converter acts as a primer, so there's no need to prime this before painting. If I can work out how to get the lid off, I'm going to paint it in this dark green colour. Looking at pictures of other machines, I think the blue it came in was not original, and a lot seemed to be green. So this looked pretty close, so that's what I'm going to go for. And I just give these side panels several coats of it. The front and back of the machine are made out of an alloy, so there's no rust on them, but they are going to need a little bit of masking up before I can paint them. With some brown paper and tape, I just cover anything I don't want to get paint on. On the front, there's just this one bit where the raise mechanism goes that I don't want to get paint on, so I'm just going to get some masking tape on that. Then I can just run an extremely dull blade around to cut it out. I went and ordered some more blades after struggling doing this. So I don't know what this metal is, so I am going to prime it. I've got an etch primer, and I give it a coat of that before doing anything else. The front and the back of the machine are made of the same material, and then there's a few other bits. There's the grill that goes on the front and the four feet, so they all get primed as well. Twenty four hours for the primer to dry, and then I get the same green on all those bits. One of the things this saw is missing is a riving knife, but there is a little space for it to go. So while I've got it in pieces and I can see everything, I'm going to make one. I position a twelve inch blade or 305mm blade on a scrap of card and have it slightly lower than the edge of the card so the riving knife will be lower than the blade by a little bit. Then I can draw around the curve of the blade and then draw out the rest of the riving knife. I'm just freehanding the back curve as the important bit is it follows the curvature of the blade and how it's going to fit into the saw. The curves go down to some straight lines and then I can just get it all cut out with some scissors. With it cut out, I can position it on the saw, slightly lower than the top of the blade, and then I can fill with this little notches where I'm going to need to cut out a slot, so I can mark where that needs to go. With a ruler, I just extend those lines, and then I can get it cut out again with the scissors. So it just slides over that little notch, and then the bar goes in to hold it in place. This is obviously a bit thin, so it doesn't hold in place very well. So that's the riving knife done. Well, actually, I think I might need to make it out of something a bit more substantial. So what I've got is some 01 2mm thick steel, which I can trace this template out onto. I get the bit of steel clamped down onto the bench, overhanging a little, and then I grab the jigsaw. I've got some very fine toothed metal cutting blades for the jigsaw, and my one's got a variable speed, so I reduce the speed down to make these cuts. Taking it nice and steady, it did the cuts no problem, making sure the steel didn't ever get too hot. It needs this little slot cutting out where it actually attaches to the saw. So I punched a hole in the top and then I could drill out a 10mm hole. With the hole drilled, I can then take the jigsaw again, cut back up along my lines to where that hole is. I used a flap disc in my angle grinder to clean up the cut and smooth it out a little. I also ground a slight bevel on the front of the riving knife, so it slice into the curve left by the saw blade better. 
Now it's time to get this saw put back together. So really, I'm just reversing the taking it apart process. I actually brought my laptop into the workshop and started watching the video of me taking it all apart. I started at the end and dragged the cursor backwards to see what stages I went through. Having a reference like that to work to made it so much easier. This is the rise and fall handle going back on the front. It slots through then goes in this little threaded brass insert. It needs to be screwed through this and then I can get it attached to the front of the saw. A lot of the fixings when I took it apart were heavily corroded. So I decided to invest in some new ones, this time in metric. I'm going to replace every nut and bolt on this with new ones. The only things I'm keeping are a few bolts that go into threaded inserts. The feet can go back on, they just get one nut and bolt in each one. Each foot has one extra hole, probably to secure it to the floor. And the previous owner tried to attach some casters. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to make a mobile base for it. I decided to lay it down to attach these side bars. When it's like this, it really doesn't weigh much at all, being made out of mostly alloy. It's the cast iron top and the motor where all the weight is. So I'll get one of these bars installed at the bottom either side, flipping the saw over to do the other one. I could pretty much find no references and certainly no manuals for this saw online. I found my best resource for information was eBay looking at other people's listings for the similar saw. After looking at multiple listings I could see mine was missing something. It has these two tabs where a bar goes and there's a hole in the middle for that rod to go through. So I'd ordered another piece of steel. I can just measure this rod and then on the drill press I can drill out a hole thread. I start by drilling a pilot hole and then I can get a larger bit and enlarge the hole. With the hole drilled I can thread that hole over the rod. Then I can get a marker and work out what angles and what lengths this bar needs to be cut to. With both ends marked I set up the Evolution miter saw and make the cuts. I keep this saw in the garage just for cutting metal and it does occasionally come in very handy. Now I can hold it up to the saw. No, not that way up, work it out, that's it. With it in place, I can put a pencil through the back, mark out where the holes need to go for the bolts. I can then get both of these holes drilled. I give the steel a bit of a clean up and then get some coats of hammerite on it. When the paint's dried, it can go in place and I can get some nuts and bolts in and get it all tightened up. I really struggled getting this dust hood out. It goes in slightly easier and there's no actual attaching it at the moment because it only gets attached to the cast iron top. So it's just going to sit in place for now. Each side gets four of these little catches that hold the side panels on. They were just screwed in and they were a real pain to get out. So this time I've got some little nuts and bolts. The front grille goes back on and I'm using some of the original hardware this time because it goes into some tapped holes on the front of the saw. I got a new attachment for the grease gun. You press this button and it opens the jaws to clip onto a nipple. So now to get my nipples greased. The attachment I had before just pushed on and I actually broke one of the little nipples off so this one works much better. The arbor on the saw is imperial, like everything else, so I got this reducing bush that has a nice friction fit. With that installed, I can get the blade put in place. I want to get the blade in so I can use it to help line up the tabletop. Now I can get the cast iron top put on. A bolt needs to go on in each corner, and again I'm using the original hardware as the cast iron top is tapped. It was a bit fiddly to get everything lined up and there wasn't that much room for movement. When I had it all attached I grabbed my thin rip jig, got it into the mitre slot and used this to give me a rough idea of how aligned the blade was to the mitre slots. It was about a mil out but there wasn't enough play to be able to adjust it. 
so I widen the holes in the aluminium base. Then I could get the top screwed on and it just had enough wiggle room to move it over slightly. The dust hood could now get bolted to the underside of the table. I use the thin rip guide again and this time I'm pretty happy that it's all lined up. So I'll call it a day here, next time we'll look at getting the motor installed. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.